What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. Today I'm going to show you a brand new color from Aura Vinyl. I'm going to show you how it installs on the front fender of Jaguar F-Pace. I'm going to pan across the hood so you can see what that looks like. Unfortunately, when I was recording the hood wrap video, I didn't plug in my mics and so I lost the audio. Didn't lose it, but it wasn't very good. So here we are doing another video. I'm going to give you all the links to products in the description below as well as or a vinyl itself and the color. This color is called Galactic Nightfall. It is pretty stunning. There are a few things that make this special. I'm gonna go through them with you today and how it installs. If you guys are looking for how to vinyl wrap videos, check out my website, ckwraps.com. The link is in the top corner and the description below for you. I'm giving away one month free as always. If you sign up, you can ask me questions there. I post on there every single day answering your questions and it's the best way to get a hold of me, as well as in a very extensive beginner one-on-one -on -one section. I just did three videos today for that and constantly adding into it. Have a look, check it out. If you're serious about it, it's all there. This fender is not too complicated. I'm gonna pan across the hood and give you an, an, a look at Aura Galactic Nightfall. Fender done so you can see more like this is super wild it's like gold red purple black it is pretty awesome as far as the color goes you might say hey there are other ones on the market very similar to that yes there are you know like it's not the first of its color what we're looking at here is the actual finish of it the finish is absolutely incredible this film and what makes it more special is that it has a pet release liner so it has a plastic release liner that plastic release liner, I'm going to show you it now, is something that makes this film a little bit more special. Not only that, it has a hard plastic cap. The cap sheet, it's called the cap sheet, has to be removed. So that's that section right there. And in combination between the combination between the hard cap sheet and the PET release liner, which is, let me just get this off right here small piece a little bit difficult to do there we go is what makes this so glossy it is so glossy it is honestly nicer than colored ppf that i've seen there are advantages to colored ppf in separate videos that i talk about versus a product like this then there are two totally different material types one is a thermoplastic polyurethane not to get too much into it and this one is a polymeric now, as far as thickness goes in a polymeric film, this is some of the thinnest polymeric film I have ever handled in my entire life. Um, it is extremely thin, almost like any other brand as far as cast film goes thin, like this is crazy thin. Tack isn't over, overly excessive, it is nice. 3M is way more sticky than this, though it has a pressure sensitive glue, but whatever. This. The benefit of a product like this is that even though it is a little bit thicker, it offers you a deeper, richer color, meaning that with a thicker film, you're able to actually embed more depth and more color. Think about it as anything else. The more layers of paint you do on your car or your wall or anything along those lines, you're going to get better depth and a better overall finish in the end. It's really just the way things work and not everyone has that knowledge but some people to some people it's just common sense now this color shifts from what i see from you know gold to purple to black to i mean i, I don't know there's all kinds of stuff going on here it's pretty it's pretty nice the hood looks phenomenal i'm going to wrap the fender for you so let's get right into it i have the piece already cut i've prepped the surface i'm going to lift the hood up to keep it out of the way because we don't want to damage the wrap that we've already done. So I have a detail spray here. I use this when I install it. This keeps things really, really nice, really clean, next to zero scratches. Uh, also, I'm going to be training for Aura Vinyl and their product. If you guys want to join a workshop, we're going to be starting those in the middle of the summer. If you guys are looking for a workshop in the United States, they're already running them. Well, mine will be in Canada, where I am here in Ottawa. Move the hood out of the way. This thing makes things a lot easier. You don't have to, but I like to. It's just the way I like to wrap. We're going to take our piece of film and we're going to rest it 
in the area of the fender. Now I have a small bit of damage. Yeah, okay, I can get rid of it like right there. I don't know if you guys can even see that. This hood is not magnetic. Sorry, the hood or fender or anything along those lines is not magnetic. What I should have done here is grabbed a couple of magnets because the door is magnetic, which is nice. I had already measured all of this and I know that the length is longer than I need it to be, which is fine. We can cut some off, but it's not that much longer. I have an extra inch and a half. Always give yourself some bleed, which means extra film. And then over here, I have an extra maybe two, two and a half inches or so. Let's get the film just tucked in underneath here. We're going to check it out just to make sure that, you know, we have enough to wrap in as far as we need to. And I can see underneath that we're probably going to be totally fine. We can come up a little bit higher if we need to and just get things in position. I'm not going to remove the release liner yet. What I want to do is I want to remove, I want to trim some out. We're not done trimming yet. I'm going to stick that down right there. We're going to trim out the wheel well arch or area. This film is, will be very directional. You should always run your films directionally. Let's get right in here, come through really nicely. You can see where I have my middle finger and I'm just guiding along there for the actual fender. And we have a nice, we have a nice chunk. This is good for mirrors, door handles, inlays, and so on. Don't worry, I'm gonna move the camera around so you guys can see stuff. Let's remove the hard cap sheet. If you guys are liking what I'm doing here, don't forget to subscribe. I never ask. Because I just think that, hey, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But if you like it, cool. Let's get that button there. All right. This is flat right now, more or less flat. I'm going to show you the starting points. And look, actually, so here's another thing. If I remove the magnets, check that out. That just stays right there. So why is it staying there? Because of static. So when I, when I remove the hard cap sheets, the amount of static that's created when removing it is incredible. And you want to really want to make sure that you don't have any debris or loose particles kicking around. So I use always compressed air and I blow away areas before I even do it. Um, we're gonna put magnets down just in case anyways. This film being a ultra gloss or a super gloss is extra sensitive to lifting glue lines and so forth as with any super gloss film or ultra gloss film. Chrome, for example, does not like to be lifted at all. Once you put it down and once it tacks, done. Don't move it. You'll get a lift line. And it's very expensive for chrome, for good chrome. Similar, okay? So the difficulty of this is not necessarily on the easy side, but you can do it if you just do it the way I'm showing you here. I'm going to just get this into position. So we're just going to tack the bumper if your bumper is still on. If it's not, just tack it to the headlight or brackets inside or anything you can. If your car is magnetic, you can just use magnets. Mine, like I said, isn't. We'll move these over. We're gonna open this end up. And lots of static still, I can feel it drawing. I'm moving my, uh, the hair on my arms. I'm gonna roll that off really nicely, cool. And come right down the bottom. Awesome. Just checking my audio because I lost it the first time. I don't want to do this again. Now you can see the tack is super nice, guys. And what's nice about having a low tack or low enough tack is that when you move the film, you don't end up with lift lines and glue lines. Super important. I mean, it's one of the most important things I could even think of. I hate high tack films when they are gloss. I would rather work with a low tack film because you don't. You're not necessarily relying on the adhesive, you're relying on your skill level to actually do the install. We're gonna take this section here, I'm just gonna explain what's going on here in a second. Take this section here and just pull it slightly towards me and just sort of get things a little bit more situated. And you can see how easy it lifts, right? Like super nice, okay? Get this a little bit more situated. There we go, okay, that's all. We're gonna just put that back down just so nothing drops in from the top. I'm gonna to zoom the camera in and get you guys into a better position so you can see all of this. All right guys, I'm gonna explain what's happening here with some of the wrinkles. We want to, when we see wrinkles, we want to pull them the opposite direction, but we can still get this piece flattened out without causing any harm to it at all. Um, I do it all the time when I do chrome wraps and it's all about how you do it. Making sure the exterior is the anchored part and not the interior, meaning 
the panel itself, you don't want that anchored. You want, and you don't want the film to really be stuck to, but here on the outside, on the door side, for example, I just anchored it's really more aggressively, right? And then same thing here on the bumper side, I've anchored it here. This is where you want your anchor points to be. You don't want your anchor points to be on the inside. Now you see these wrinkles here? We want these to go flat. Now I typically like to start, and this does change slightly, but start on this side of the fender to get it flattened out. This area here is pretty much the flattest part of most cars and their fenders. Let's lift this up. Nice, bring that back a bit. And then we're gonna see where my hands are. My hands are not top to bottom. They are just somewhere about shoulder width apart. And we're gonna take this and keep it pulled apart left and right. Cool, once I get that done, we're gonna stick that down. So anchor it to the door. I can take this and anchor it to the edge of the hood if I, if I want to or if I can. It doesn't always work because it's not a very big edge. It'll probably lift off at some point. We're gonna see. I don't even know if that's in ca on the camera, but it's anchored to the edge of the hood right now. That doesn't matter so much. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring the film down. So again, we're still anchored on the exterior side. Okay, cool, pop that up. Quick lifts are very important. Pop that up, there we go, give it a nice pull. And this is no heat. Right now in the shop, it is 22 degrees Celsius, which is like 70, probably 72 or 73, something like that. It's nothing crazy. Fahrenheit, that's what I mean. So still nothing's anchored on the inside yet. We can take the film and you can see it's going down really, really nicely right now without, again, no, without adding any heat. We're gonna bring this back, so pop. Pop it one more time. There we go. And then we're gonna pull towards the front. I use my body weight. Look at that, that's beautiful. And then here, we're gonna take it, put it down all in one shot. Look how nice that is. So what is so special about a polymeric film? Well, polymeric films are, they shrink a little bit more than a cast film, but we use that to our advantage. And I honestly love installing these things because they look so good and they're so easy to install. Bring those wrinkles up. That's what I just did right there. And we're at the body line. So at this point right now, all I'm gonna do is add in my detail spray on the surface, you can spray the buffer of your squeegee. I always recommend getting a new buffer or putting a new buffer on when you do wrap with a nice high gloss like this. We don't need a lot of this stuff. Just helps lower friction, creates a lot more glide, okay? Squeegee from the largest, flattest area and get all of the air out of the largest, flattest area. What I mean by that is the anchor point of where the film is touching mostly. Okay, now that I'm got, I've got that done, what I wanna do is I wanna just keep this tight right here and just bring that up to the very top of that body line right there. Not that tight, but just keeping control of it. Beautiful. Under here, we're just gonna come in and lay all this down super freely. Like, I don't even have to try. That's all done to the top edge there. Let's come in right through here and get all this finished up as well. No tension whatsoever, okay? No stretching into any recesses, nothing. Because you don't need to do that when you know what you're doing. Stretching into recesses is, some cases makes sense, you know, behind the door handle or whatever, but most of the time it's pretty amateur stuff and, and you don't need to do that. It's all about minimizing tension and making sure that you don't have too much tension in any particular area. Cool, so I just cut some film away there. We've got the rest down underneath the hood. And that was a calculated cut. So I don't wanna make sure, I wanna make sure that I have enough coverage. And so I don't wanna miss anything. I'm gonna take this little section right here, cut that away. That's a tension line. That's gonna help. That's why I have tape there. And we're gonna finish the rest of the squeegeeing off. So for the rest of the way down, right here, on the body line, we've squeegeed, we've, we've uh, squeegeed up to that body line, worked the air into this little side vent thingy. It doesn't really do anything, but it's just the looks. Squeegee down, down, down. Now we're gonna come across here as well, right across the flat side of the fender. And we're gonna just alleviate tension here. That's all I did was lift from the bottom and 
I can keep the film elevated to keep a bit more control. See how nice that lifts? Like no lift lines at all when it lifts like that. If you find the film is more sticky than you'd like it to be, there is a product called Tack Reducer and they have it. But I don't think it's really necessary with this. Maybe necessary with some other films. I like that they reduced the tack on it because it looks really, it works really nicely. Now that all of it is done. Okay, that's all done. It's wrapped. We're going to do the edges, corners, and trimming. What I'm going to do is get my heat gun out. We need the heat gun. We're going to be doing this section over here. We're going to come across. What we want to do here is push into the last little bit of the recess right there, just that little bit. There's no sense in trying to feed it into that little spot right there simply because it's going to mess up the rest of the wrap and it's such a small and very shallow recess. Also, the vent is going to sit there once it goes back in. You can do whatever section you'd like to do right now. So first off, let's just take care of the vent since we're already there. And so we're going to throw a glove on. We're going to add some heat to the area. You're going to see it all move. Okay, so see it all move. That's done. That's done shrinking. It's what it did. All films do that. Every single film does that. And we're going to work our way into the recess. We don't want to touch the exterior side too much when we do this. That's important because we don't want to cause any more scratching. We want to avoid any scratching. Beauty. Okay, that's all done right there. I have too much film in the wheel well. I also have too much film right here. So we're going to take our knife and we're going to bring it across the tape that we put down. Always don't like don't push too hard. You don't have to cut on the tape. You can lift the film as you cut. A lot of times I do. Let's cut this back down to about an inch left. We don't need that much either. It's just too much. Let's come in right through here. Cool. Right under here on the very bottom. I think we're most mostly on camera. I mean, it's a pretty easy area. Come across. I'm going to come around the corner like this up. Boom. Nice. And then come across that way. Perfect. So let's go do this cut from the body line of the door right there. We're cutting on the door side. So I'm using the back side of my knife to cut against the door side without actually cutting on anything at all. Because if we use the back side of our knife, then we don't have to worry about cutting into any paint or anything else. It's little tricks that are important. Okay, we're gonna come right up to here, put my thumb right there, just hold it for a second so I don't tear it too far and just trim this little section off. As you notice, half the car is still wrapped, so no problem. We're gonna be removing that wrap. Let's get in under here. Cool. All I did was lift that up off the tape, make sure it wasn't too stuck. We want to take our hard to hard edge of our squeegee and we want to tuck this in here. It's called pre-tucking. And I like to do this in tighter areas, especially in an area like this, because we want to cover all of that white paint, right? So if you just end up leaving the film as it was and then cutting on the other side, there's a high chance that you're going to show some white paint. Other than that, remove the bumper, remove the headlight, but I'm showing you that you don't need to do that. Right here, we're going to cut. Now I'm going to cut on the opposite side, which will give me a little bit extra. Start our cut from the inside. Oops, come down, found a little notch there. It's all right. We didn't do anything crazy or out of line there. There we go. And then not go right to the very end. I'm going to trim that off just like that. And then I'm going to finish my cut off coming down and around that corner just like so. Cool. All right, that's ready to get tucked in there. We're not finished yet. So we're going to get right in there. We're going to finish this and then I'm going to move the camera entirely over so you guys can see all the rest of the stuff a lot better. But we're going to finish off this. And what I like to do here on the corner is take it, heat it, and then roll it in. Done. Come across that top edge. So slightly rolling it around. So same thing on this corner, heat it, and then let the film shrink and then roll that around. And then that is all done really nicely as well. Oops, I got one fold inside there. Don't worry about that. 
If you get a crease on the inside, make sure you just pull it out and pull it apart. And then go out there, heat it again, get it down really nicely. If you happen to actually damage the film, like crease it, crease, like a crease damage where it shows like a glue line, don't even worry about that because no one's going to see it inside here. It's going to get hit with stones and stuff eventually. This is a pretty high wear and tear zone. So see how thorough I'm being when it comes to wrapping around this area? It's very important. While I'm here, I'm going to take it, I'm going to trim it out. Normally I do all my trimming at the end. But we're just going to trim that out. And again, back side of the blade along that edge on the inside. This way we're not cutting anything, we're not damaging anything, and we're getting full coverage. If you wrap too much around in this area here, it can be very difficult to get all of the film tucked in and around the edge. So we don't want to have too much. All I know right now is that we have no tension and that's where we want to be. We have no tension, next to little tension, next to no tension at all, but we do have some, it's not much. The film was gradually worked around. Get in here, heat it, finish up that edge really nicely, okay? This is beautiful. Down here, while we're here, we're gonna take this bottom section, heat that, and then get in there with the buffer side first, tuck, 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 little Pac-Man style, and then that's all done too. And then right down there on the very corner, heat that and massage that around. We're gonna open up the door eventually, but I'm just getting this worked around just a little bit right now. Great, and then same thing here, let's start doing some of this. I use the buffer side first. The screws are actually removed from the bumper, so that's why you notice that it's a little flimsy. So you see that? Just kind of clipped in there right now. Great, so that is more or less all done for this section. Awesome. Let's move the camera over, so you the corner, the inside edge, and the top corners. Okay guys, I'm gonna show you the corner here. So you can see I have masking tape on, but we can see the corner is still very exposed. You know, it's not wrapped yet. I'm gonna trim some film away just to make things a little bit more obvious and clear for you to see. Probably would do that anyways. So what we wanna do when we do the corner here is, and how I like to do polymerics, is just push down somewhat in the middle there, like right there. See that, okay. So we're somewhat like, we have like a wrinkle there and a wrinkle there on each side, but the middle is flat. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this a little bit elevated right there on the sides and we're gonna heat and let the film shrink. So I had some bubbles right there so I didn't squeegee down really nicely. We're gonna let the film shrink. Okay, so I'm gonna lift that up and let it shrink around the corner. Okay, so you can see this rounding off really nicely. We're gonna take pressure with our finger and finish up the one side right there. Okay, that's beautiful. It's gonna look really nice when I'm done, trust me. We're gonna do the same thing on the bottom side. So I'm just gonna lift up some of that film that's stuck to the lens with the headlight. And then heat a little bit there, cool. And then push down right there. So what are we looking for when we wrap a corner like this? Okay, so what we're looking for, and I'm gonna show you right now, using my squeegee, is we're looking for how nice it looks or how rounded it looks when we stick our squeegee underneath it. Now I just noticed, because I'm not, I'm staying out of your way, I just noticed I had a wrinkle. So let's just bring the film back. Let's pull that wrinkle apart, it's right there. Let's pull that wrinkle apart. Okay, we're gonna pull that wrinkle apart, add a little bit of cold stretch to it, nothing crazy, and then hit that one more time, okay? A decent amount of heat. Now you don't wanna to heat too hot, because what will happen is, I mean, you have a headlight there, you don't wanna break the headlight, you can crack the headlight. So what I'm looking at right now, if I roll my squeegee underneath this corner, is I'm adding warmth to it, so I like to do that a lot. You can see that it's super, super, super rounded. Okay, look at that, it's beautiful. It's the best way to tell. And I didn't stretch anything, okay? So same thing here, finish that off slightly underneath, a little bit more heat, done. As long as the film isn't sticking to anything, you're gonna get a pretty nice result when it comes to doing this. Use your thumb, preferably with a glove on. Your fingers probably not like asbestos like mine because I've done this a lot. And then I'll take some of this and we're gonna massage some of that down and find the bottom edge of the hood, so edge of the fender, which goes to right there. Cool. So I'm gonna take my knife 
We're going to come in just like this from higher up. Try, try my best to stay out of your way here. I have you on the camera crane, but we're going to come in and glide our knife underneath the edge really nicely. Come in and around. We can't do this when the film is hot, so come in and around the corner as nicely as we can. Let's just split this because it'll be easier. There we go. Get it off of the light. There we go. And then come in and around the underside of this corner, just like this. So right now my blade is underneath the corner. Don't mind some of the scratches and stuff you see on here. I teach people on this car all the time. So it's mainly from headlight tinting. Okay, so now that we've done that cut, the corner looks pretty good, it's all right. You guys are basically looking at it from the underside, which is crazy because you know most people don't see a corner from the underside. Let's get in there and add a bit more heat and finish it off. Always important. I think this is one of the most important steps right here. And we're gonna work the film down and around this edge. You will almost never see the camera in this position. Hit heat, work our way around. We're not gonna go anything too crazy here. We're just gonna go around about a quarter inch until I hit a body line. So right about here is where I feel like there's a nice body line. So it's a little bit more than a quarter inch, let's say about half an inch in. And I'm not gonna go all the way to the top yet, I don't need to, there's no point. Okay, glove off again, because you can't hold the film and cut and it just doesn't work very well. Now how can I do this and stay out of your way? So what I wanna do is I wanna bring the film up to the body line. And I'm gonna show you how to do this without cutting on any paint, right? So this is the cool part. Bring that film right up to the body line Try and get the film as straight as possible against that body line. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep the film tight. We're gonna poke through and glide our knife towards us. Check that out. As long as we keep it tight, I'm not cutting on any paint, guys. Check that out. That's pretty damn beautiful. And we're in further than if we were to leave the hood closed and cut on the hood side. So same thing here, I'm gonna add tension and then come through. Got a little notch there, but it's nothing. It's notching the film is what I mean. That squeaking is just the film itself. Take your time. And then eventually we're gonna get to a point of where that body line ends, right about there. Cool. I'm gonna come out with my knife, done. It's pretty sweet. Now I'm gonna get you right up in there underneath using the camera crane. So give me two seconds, I'm gonna switch the camera around. Okay guys, this is probably a point of view that nobody's ever really ever seen. Um, so I'm gonna finish off this little section right here. We're gonna take a bit of heat. I almost cut too much film away. It's very, very, very close, which is a bit of a bummer because I'm gonna miss a little bit of white like right where my fingers are. You might see it, you might not see it. You probably won't see it because look how thin that edge is there. There's a tiniest little bit of white right there. Not worried about it, it's nothing. So that was that's close because I almost messed that up. Any more than that, it would be a redo. So adding heat, bringing the film down and around that top edge. And just in it around until the point of me making it to the inside edge right there. Like no one's gonna show you this. It's never gonna happen. Probably the only one to ever show you this. Cause I like you guys to see this kind of stuff. All right, beautiful. So once that cools a little bit, we're gonna be cutting. So we have a lot of extra film. I mean, some people like to just jam it all underneath the corner or underneath the edge. I like to trim it away. So let's come in right there and glide our blade on the underside edge again and get the rest of this trimmed out. So I'm trying my best to stay out of your way here. I do have to keep the film tight as I do this because you don't want to have um, loose film. It doesn't cut very nicely. Okay, that's pretty sweet. Like no one's, you might see a little bit of white from your angle, but think about it, the hood's gonna be closed 90% of the time, 99% of the time. Don't worry about that. I missed a tiny, tiny bit on this corner here, but I don't really care right now because I can just redo it. 
That was just because I cut too much film away in the beginning. Okay, so that's pretty nice. That's a nice rounded corner. It's not perfect, perfect, but it's pretty nice. And we're gonna end up moving the camera over slightly. So let me just finish up some of this, cut off some excess right about there. And then what I'll need to do is I'll need to close the hood. Before I do that, I'm gonna take my heat gun, heat the inside and get that nice and tight and nice and flat. Beautiful. Seal up those edges, perfect. Let's move the camera. Oh, I missed one thing. I see extra material right there. You guys probably saw it. You're like, what are you doing? I'm gonna do it right now. That's just because I kind of shorted my cut a little bit. There we go, okay. So we're gonna take that, add more heat to that now, since I kind of messed around with it a bit. There we go, and massage that down. Now you're gonna see white, like I said, on the very, very bottom but nobody's gonna see from underneath here. It's almost impossible, unless your hood's open. And you're looking at it the way I am, the way you are from like one foot away. It's just craziness. Let's move the camera. So I know you guys all have this question here. What do you do up at this top side? Well, here we go. We're gonna peel off the tape, or peel the film off the tape. We're gonna come in and around as freely as possible, so no tension by lifting off the tape, it's super important. Yes, I have too much film, so it is going to be cut away or tucked, you know, um, or tucked in, but that's too much to tuck in, so we're gonna be cutting it away. And we're gonna come in, you can see how I can add a little pliability. See that? I can add a little pliability to the fender, it's nothing crazy, I'm not trying very hard, I'm just adding a little bit of force. It's just flimsy aluminum anyway, so whatever. And as soon as I get that down like that around that corner, Check it out. We're gonna add heat again. And we're gonna get this down nice and tight. It's gonna round itself right back off and that's all good to go. Okay, a little bit more pressure from my squeegee, like right about there. And again, lifting off the tape, super, super important. Might as well cut this section here while we're in that camera mode and then I can move on. Film's a little hot, see how, see how it kind of drags with my blade? So I should have waited a little bit longer, or my knife is just not sharp enough. That's okay, even if we don't get a perfect cut, what we'll do is we'll add heat to that nice little messy area, or sloppy area, so do that. See how it kind of cleans itself up already? And then that's good, that corner is beautiful. Move the camera again to the outside, and then this will pretty much be it. All right guys, so we have this last little section to do here. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I can, I can push down and I can find the door right here. It should all be on camera, more or less. And then we're gonna poke through and then we're gonna bring our knife down and around, cool. That's gonna help separate that from the door a lot more than where it is right now. Just lift that up slightly. And then let's just come and cut this away going up. Now you can put tape there if you're concerned about the paints or any trim or anything like that. Don't necessarily need to, just showing you that you can, or explain that you can. Now what we're also gonna be doing here is we're gonna be opening the door. Okay, this helps a lot because it allows us to get in here a little bit more freely. And this is almost all cars. So we're gonna take that, bring that down nice, and around that corner, just like that, same as before. Top edge is mint right now, okay? So I have to add heat still. This right here, we've pushed down in the middle, we're gonna be adding heat to that. And then we're gonna finish up the inside behind the fender area, so like what we roll around. So we're gonna heat here, finish that up. Beautiful, roll that around slightly, oops. Made a, I made a small crease on the inside, that's okay. I just lift it back and then start again. Same small crease right there, okay? So if that happens, that's just because I'm using two sheets and I don't have a glove on. But if that happens, just pull back. It's not on the top side, so don't worry about it. Okay, that's all done. Let that cool slightly as opposed to cutting it too early like we did last time. It doesn't take more than 10 seconds or so. Well, it depends on your room temperature, but in normal room temperature, it doesn't probably take more than 10 seconds or so. We're pretty much there. So we're gonna cut around the inside area, get rid of all that excess. And then we're gonna come in down this way, 
And then when we do this, I'm going to lift this piece out before I lose it. Be careful when you're doing this with your knife. You can cut yourself. Come in and around the corner. So come in. You might see white right there. That's on the pillar side. That's just because I've had people practicing this and they actually cut away it. Cut it away. Okay, come in down underneath here. Again, a little bit of tension on the film. I should actually snap a blade off. I can feel that it's getting dull. Stick that scrap piece to the mirror. Let's finish this off on the top. Nice, that just goes all the way back down by itself. Get in there, roll that around. It's beautiful. We're gonna get it in the top side edge, buffer side, a little bit of heat, nothing crazy. Just a bit of heat to conform and mold that down and around. Then we're gonna zoom back. We're gonna get in the door area right here and finish up that last little bit. And then I'm gonna wipe off the streaks so you can see this. Okay, so heat there, push that around. Heat there, push that around. Great, no wrinkles at all on any of these body lines. Finish all the way to the bottom, all the way back up. A few passes, at least, at least three passes pretty much. That's what we wanna do. And this is done. So I'm gonna wipe this off and then get you in for a nice close up. All right, let's do a little walk around here. So we wanna talk about scratches. Next to none, look at the clarity of the film. Look at the reflection, guys. You see that detail of the shop? You can pretty much even see the signatures on the wall. A little streaky still, I didn't wipe it all off, got most of it off, but check that out. Basically, no scratches. This helps when you use a fresh buffer in combination with, check that out, that's crazy, right? It's like a mirror. Um, with a detail spray, now check at the top. This is where things get nuts. As soon as it starts to transition, I'll move around, don't worry. It's actually probably even better now because we've got the hood and the fender done so you can see more. Like this is super wild. It's like gold, red, purple, black. Like this angle, it looks totally like something else. Super, super, super glossy still. Like check out the reflection. Look at the beams in the ceiling, okay? Clarity of the light is really good as well. It was actually nicer. I put it next to PPF. I mean, even though the color was different, still actually, it was still nicer. It was more glossy. This little streaky still, you can see like some streaks here. See them. This has been on for like a week on the hood. Just letting you know. That's, that's pretty nice. If I move around this way, come down, come up. All depends on how the light hits it. That's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoy the color, the new color from Aura Vinyl. Super, super glossy. Goes down with next to no scratches as long as you do your parts. Because if you put sand on the surface or you have a dirty buffer, obviously that's going to cause scratches. So make sure everything is clean. That's a most basic part of this job or this process as far as installation goes. Um, clean and prep is very important, probably one of the most important things. And then we move on from there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, I look forward to doing more videos for you. And if you're looking for training, don't forget to check them out. And if you want more training, check us out as well. Again, link top corner and the description below for you guys. Thank you for watching as always. I appreciate it. Take care.